Hi to everyone, your pal Ral here with some more Pokemon Platinum. Last episode, we explored Stark Mountain with Buck. We stopped Caron from using the last remaining parts of Team Galactic to take the Magma Stone to extort people. And now we're back in the survival area because Buck, I guess he wants to reward us. Yo, if it isn't Ral, this, it's my place. Drop in, hey? And as you can see, Max is here. Hey Ral, how are you doing? Me? You even need to ask? Piling up the wins at the battle tower. Huh? My longest winning streak? What, you're gonna grill me now? <laughs> uh, and I think his dialogue changes every now and again as well. But also, after clearing Stark Mountain, on weekends, Max will have something for us. But I'll show that off at a later point. Anyways, here. As you can see, there's some gym leaders here, as well as Cheryl. Oh, so you so you are your Buck's friend, yes? I've heard about you from both Buck and Wee. Well, my young friend, you're always welcome here from now on. This is a private club for only Sinnoh's gym leaders, or those vouched for by those self-same gym leaders. It's a place where the best seek to better themselves. Welcome to the battleground. What should we talk about today? Ah, I know. Let me tell you about the volcano named Stark Mountain. That volcano dates to when Sinnoh was made by the melding of time and space. Fiery lava spilled out and pulled, and then it became a Pokemon. It said the Magma Stone was used to keep the Pokemon pinned down. It kept the Pokemon from rampaging and the volcano from erupting. So you're gonna want to talk to this old guy. Uh, first off, that's that's super important. Anyways, what do you have to say, Buck? My place is open only to the toughest trainers. I'm serious. You're supposed to be introduced to a gym leader, but you're special. Well, I'm off to the Battle Frontier. I feel like seeing how far I can go up the tower. And that's it for Buck. But again, you want to talk to this guy. Buck, I guess this is his grandfather. Because with that, there's going to be something for us if we return to Stark Mountain. As for the battleground, as you can see, there are gym leaders here. And the roster that you can uh, fight here in the battleground changes every day. There's always going to be at least two gym leaders, sometimes three. And then one of the five partners that you've teamed up with throughout your journey through Sinnoh. At least if you've encountered them, because only one of them is required. Two, if you want to access this place, which would be uh, Cheryl and Buck. The others are optional, but uh, yeah. I'm going to save battling here in the battleground later on. So that's, uh, that's going to be something to look forward to. Anyways, I'm going to meet you back at Stark Mountain, because now that Buck isn't going to be there anymore, we can actually explore a few of the places that required you to use um, uh, Rock Climb. Also, not not the Pokedex. Did not mean to open that up. I uh, shifted around my party around a little bit just because um, a Geon and Cosmos are lacking in experience and I feel like having them gain some experience in Stark Mountain plus they're, they're just going to be useful overall. So yeah, anyways, I'll meet you back at Stark Mountain. So I'm back in the big room of Stark Mountain. So it's time to explore and see the things that we can get now that we have access to Rock Climb. A Geon grew to level 60, by the way. Uh, you know what? I'll keep a Geon in the lead. Anyways, first off, right up here is an interruption. Okay, so I just want to go up here because there is, there should be an item. Yep, an Ultra Ball. Very useful. Gonna be needing as many of those as I can possibly get. And now I want to go this way. And there's that item down there. Yep, I want to grab that item that's to the right of me. And hopefully it's something useful. Let's see. Just right down here. Just having a rock climb makes navigating this place so much easier. Okay then. Should be something good. A max elixir. Very, very good item. Although I probably won't be using it just because it's one of those items that are too good to use, in my opinion. Just because you can't buy max elixirs here. Anyways, I believe there is one more item right up here. Right. Yep. Nugget. Okay. 
another one of those items that you can use for selling. Cool. Okay, well now I can just make my way to the end of this place. So to do that, you want to go this way. And because we get interrupted... No, because we have access to rock climb, we can make it to the end a lot more quickly. Just go right here. And right where these two trainers are, you can just use rock climb and it'll take you directly to the end. No need to go all the way and start using strength and all that nonsense. Anyways, I want to check my items here. This is definitely a point where I recommend saving. I think 45 Ultra Balls is good enough. As for who I want to send out first... Hmm. Hmm. I think... I think we're actually good. So let's just go in. And, as you can see, there's a Pokemon for us to see to see, to encounter. It would be neat, since Platinum updated the, um, the aesthetics of this place, it would be neat to see, like, pools of lava behind this thing, but no. Anyways, once again, I highly recommend saving, but once you're ready, it's time to fight this. This is the legendary Pokemon Heatran. Heatran Strangely enough, it's level 50, where in the uh, Diamond and Pearl, it was level 70. Heatran is a very interesting Pokemon. It's a Fire Steel type, has the ability Flash Fire, so if you were to try to use a Fire Attack on it to get like a neutral hit off it or anything, it would just boost its attacks even, uh, even better. But it's a really, really good Pokemon. Its speed is decent, but because it's Fire and Steel, it has some pretty interesting resistances. Although it does have that uh, four times weakness to to a ground, but fire gives it some pretty interesting offensive moves to use, and it can also learn interesting things like Stone Edge. Has access to like Flamethrower, Fire Blast. Its signature move is Magma Storm, which is basically a stronger version of Fire Spin. It's just a a really good Pokemon. Has Metal Sound to lower the opponent's special defense. It's it's a really powerful legendary Pokemon, especially when used correctly. You can teach it things like Stealth Rock as well to help it out. And uh, right here, Scary Faces is another uh, good move for it to help with its not as good speed. But its defenses are also really good. The Steel type gives it some pretty nice resistances to other attacks. Definitely a Pokemon that I can recommend. Another interesting fun fact about it is that it is the only legendary Pokemon as of right now, as of the time of uploading, that can be either male or female. It can't breed or anything, but it's uh, that's an interesting fun fact about it, so... Yeah. Can I get a Paralysis? No. Um, okay, well, the reason I had a Geon out was to get the Paralysis, but also because um, a Geon resists both Fire and Ground-type moves. But Cosmos, you have Yawn, so I'm just going to use that and see how that turns out. Also, Heatran just looks really cool. Okay, so I should be set for a few turns. Lava Plume is probably going to hurt. And of course it gets the burn on me too. Uh, ooh, let's use the Ultra Ball. Also, uh, whenever I see Heatran, I'm just reminded how like... In the Diamond and Pearl anime during the Sinnoh League, there was just a random trainer in the background with a Heatran. That trainer wasn't important to the plot or anything. Certainly not Tobias, but just some random person that managed to capture a legendary Pokemon. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to continue to do this until I eventually catch it or shenanigans happen. But really, this is where we're at. 
I keep on going until it wakes up and I use Yawn. I will need to heal that burn though. Let's see. What what moves have we seen from this thing? We've seen Lava Plume. Uh Metal Sound. Scary Face has one other move. I wanna say it's like Flash Cannon or maybe uh Ancient Power or something. Hmm. Now one funny thing about Heatran is, uh, despite it being a Pokemon that is centered around volcanoes, it can't learn the move Eruption. At least naturally. Aw, I thought I had it there. Uh, in this generation, in order to get a Heatran with Eruption, you had to play Pokemon Ranger Guardian Signs and complete a special, I think it was a Wi-Fi mission, in order to get it, so... Yeah, and... And the Heatran in that game was always locked to a quiet nature, so it couldn't make use of heat or eruption to its full potential because its speed would be a, a big downfall to it. But, I mean, later generations made it possible for you to work around that thanks to mints and whatever. But that's not this generation that I'm playing. Okay, um, it would be in my best interest to revive, uh, to revive Cosmos, because Cosmos, again, has the whole yawn thing. It would have been better if I paralyzed this thing. Crunch, okay. It would have been better if I paralyzed this thing, but... Oh well. Uh, just continue to use my Ultra Balls. I might need to stock up on some more later on. Okay, Heatran. Are you just going to be difficult? I think you are. Okay, you didn't get the burn at the very least. Okay, then. Come on. That's a cool noise for Metal Sound. Okay, we've seen all these things move, so I guess... Really, all I can do now is just cut until something interesting happens, like I catch it or it knocks itself out. So, there we go. Oh, wait a minute. Cosmos was my last Pokemon! What's, what's Heatran gonna do with all that money? Okay, round two. I had to reset because I ran out of Ultra Balls anyways, so... Yeah, also, um, because I reset and I forgot to save, uh, Aegean's experience is a little bit different. Aegean still hit level 60, but yeah. Anyways, can the usual strategy to paralyze this thing, hopefully. Also, the reason why talking to that old man in the battleground is important is because I believe if you don't talk to him, then Heatran won't show up? I wanna say? I might be wrong on that. Also, this Heatran has more defense this time around, because it's taken more body slams. Okay, that's good. Don't want to accidentally use Earth Power, so I'm just gonna use Body Slam some more. Because any other move I use against it will probably destroy it other than Ice Beam. We're almost at a point where catching conditions are almost optimal. Cool. Just continue to do that. Also, that first battle with Heatran, I was so sure that we were going to get to a point where Heatran was going to use Struggle, but it didn't. Ooh, that's close. Okay, then. I think one more Body Slam ought to do it. And now I can begin the ball chugging process again. Okay, I have 45 Ultra Balls. You could use Dusk Balls. That would be a lot more better just because you are inside a cave. So Dusk Balls will be at their uh, maximum catching capacity, I guess. But I'm set in my ways. I'm using the Ultra Ball.
Wow. That did a lot. Come on. Two. Three. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Only took two attempts to capture Heatran. Cool. So what does the Pokedex have to say about Heatran? See, its body is made of rugged steel. However, it is partially melted in spots because of its own heat. That is intense. Cool. Well, we got Heatran. That's pretty much all there is for us to do here in Stark Mountain. So I'm going to meet you at a Pokemon Center so we can take a look at it. Okay, so let's take a look at Heatran now. Bold nature. Okay, then increases defense, lowers attack. Not bad. It's not like I'm going to be using Heatran, but still, I guess you can go um, up here. Or maybe here. No, you can go up here. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> now, now that that's done, I'm not going to end it off just yet, actually. There's still... One more part of the battle zone to explore. One final frontier, if I want to be corny and say, because all that's left to explore here is the battle frontier. So let's let's go inside and take a look. I'm not going to be participating in any battles here, but let's give ourselves a little sneak peek at what's to be expected. Oh, you have a verse recorder. How nice. We upgrade verse recorders for first visitor, visitors. Visitors. So now that our verse recorder is upgraded. Let's take a look at it. Uh, let's see. First, let's take a look at what this clerk has to say. The Battle Frontier is a place that has five facilities dedicated to battling. There's the Battle Tower to beat seven trainers in a row. Battle Hall, where you battle with one individual Pokemon in sets of ten. Battle Factory, where you use rental Pokemon. The Battle Castle, where you use a currency called Castle Points to make your way through it, and the battle arcade where you you uh, play a little roulette. Basic rules, battles uh, have special rules there. There's no experience. It's basically multiplayer rules. And Pokemon that, because there's no experience, Pokemon will not level up. And Pokemon that are higher than level 50 will be brought down to level 50, which is pretty nice. And Pokemon under level 50 will not be bumped up to 50, so keep that in mind. Battle points are currency. It's a form of currency that you get in the Battle Frontier. Every time you win a set of battles, which is usually 7 battles in a row without losing, or in the Battle Hall's case, uh, 10 battles, you get battle points. And the more sets you win in a row, the more battle points you win, or earn. And you can use them for various things in the Battle Frontier. Exchange service corner, that's where you exchange your battle points. And the performance monitor will just keep track of what your current streak is, your best streak, how many wins and whatever, things like that. Anyways, the verse recorder, now that it's been upgraded, it will now... Also, I didn't... I didn't think I've... I don't think I've actually shown off the verse recorder, but here it is. If you touch the side on the touch screen, like where these lines are on the left and right side of the screen, you can actually change the color of it. Fun fact. I'm gonna... Keep the green, I guess. So, before, we could use the verse recorder to record videos with your friends or whatever, or any multiplayer stuff that you did. I think you can have up to... Four videos, your own, and then others that you've saved like through um, the global terminal when that was still a thing. The Frontier record will show us how many battle points we've earned and these five symbols on the top screen correspond to things that we can do in each of the facilities. I'll uh, talk more about that when we get one of the things that can show up. Anyways, uh, let's talk about you. Okay, you talk about the battle tower? The Battle Tower is the most basic facility out of all of the 
uh, the facilities in the Battle Frontier. You battle until you lose. Standard multiplayer rules, I guess. No items allowed except for held items. Uh, species clauses in effect. Things like that. So you talk about the Battle Factory. You use rental Pokemon. And you can swap Pokemon out in between each battle. So th this one tests your knowledge about individual Pokemon, which is pretty neat. See the battle hall, you use one individual Pokemon, like I mentioned before, and you just win as much as you can. You fight... I'll, I'll talk more about these facilities in depth when we get the chance, but this is just giving us a brief, I guess, a brief summary of each of the facilities. The battle castle, so after... voice crack. After every individual battle that you uh, participate in, you will earn castle points, which can be used for healing and whatnot. Which is the only facility that's like this. In every other facility, after every battle, you're automatically healed. But here, you're not. So you can use uh, castle points to heal or borrow items because you can't use your own. Things like that. I already talked to you. Nope, stop talking to you. Okay, you talk about the battle arcade. There is a game board which has a roulette that you play. And depending on what the roulette lands on, various effects can happen in the middle of the battle. It's a very interesting place. And there's some NPCs here that this is... Nope. N no, uh... No, like, plaque on these statues or anything. Whatever. Let's see, the tower, hall, castle, factory, and arcade. Yes, I know. Uh... This... That's not an acronym. Fetch? Chaft? It's important to this old man, I guess, that an acronym be made out of all the facilities. First letters. My dream is the Battle Palmer of the Battle Tower. I want to record it for posterity. Well, you need to be pretty good enough to get to Palmer, so... Yeah. The first recorder is nifty. Yeah, it is, I guess. Well, it's a whole new adventure for me. Well, anyways, let's go inside. So, the Battle Frontier is not here in Diamond and Pearl. It's replaced with the battle park and just the battle tower. The battle park is essentially the same as this exchange area here. There's some um, items that can be earned. Vitamins for one battle point. These items, the power items, uh, they are used for EV training basically. Then we have the toxic orb and the flame orb which will inflict that status on the Pokemon holding it. It might sound like a bad thing but there are situations where this could be useful, like if you want to give a status condition to a Pokemon with Guts. Or if you want to prevent the opponent from using a status condition on you. White Herb, it's a one-time use item that will restore any stat that is lowered. Pretty good for situations like uh, close combat, or if you use Overheat, things like that. Power Herb, uh, if you use a move like Fly or Solar Beam that requires a charge up turn, it will bypass that for one time only. Bright Powder will increase accuracy, or lower the opponent's accuracy. Right. A choice band, we've gotten the choice specs and the choice scarf. This is the attack counterpart to that, where it will boost the holder's attack stat, but will lock them into one move. Focus band, I think we already have one, but uh, gives us a 10% chance of living through an attack with one HP. Scope lens, we already have one of these, increases the critical hit, hit uh, blah, blah. wow, critical hit ratio. Muscle Band will increase the power of physical moves for a little bit, or by a little bit. Focus Sash, we already have one of these, but um, if a Pokemon were to be knocked out at full HP, this would save them with one HP left. We already have a Choice Scarf, that's the speed counterpart, where your speed gets boosted. Razor Claw will increase critical hit ratio. Razor Fang gives us a chance to inflict flinching. Also used to evolve... Uh, Sneasel and Gligar, respectively, and a rare candy. As you can see, these are kind of expensive with 48 battle points each, 32 and 16. Yeah, you're gonna need to be in the battle frontier quite a bit to uh, to get some of these items. And here are some TMs: Toxic, Thunderwave, Will-O-Wisp, Attract, Aerial Ace, Brick Break, Bulk Up, Calm Mind, X Scissor, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, Sludge Bomb, Dragon Pulse, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. Got some really good moves here. Not gonna lie. I mean, Thunder Wave, if this was available early on, I could have taught it to Cosmos, but... Nah. That that wasn't a thing. But yeah, some of these are actually really worth getting. 
This is the only way to get multiple Earthquakes and Stone Edges, which are really, really good moves. Other moves are situational at best, but still worth getting. Now here, this person has Scratch Off cards. They only cost one battle point each. And I'll show this off once we get the chance, but you can get some various items like berries and whatnot. You can find Ditto icons in the Scratch Off cards, which are basically uh, freebies. Voice crack. But yeah. And here is a uh, small scale replica of the Battle Frontier. Anyways, let's uh, talk to some of the NPCs here. Wait, what? Let's you ride the ebbs and flows of life. You're a little kid. You should. <laughs> Why are you talking <laughs> like that? You should be talking about like how it's fun to swim or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, you need to. Uh, you need to be diligent about all sorts of these details in the Battle Frontier if you want to get far in it. And let's see, there's a lot of NPCs here to talk about, or to talk to as well. I don't think, oh, this NPC is talking about Frontier Brains. They are tough trainers that we'll hopefully see. Wait, what? The way of Pokemon is deep. Yeah, sure. So you have to keep winning with rental Pokemon. Yep. Battle Factory is pretty interesting. Even the Magikarp I caught fishing has a shot at, mm, I guess, but <laughs> no. Magikarp can only get you so far. See, I treat every battle as if it were my last. Going into battle willing to accept a loss? Unforgivable. Okay. And you know what? I'm gonna make my way clockwise starting from here. So this is the battle tower. Its height is a symbol of its challenged trainers. Uh, let's see. Trainers can command Pokemon thieves moves in battle with confidence. They can do that because trainers believe in their Pokemon. Okay. But yeah, the Battle Frontier is a pretty tough place, especially as you continue to win and your streak gets higher and higher. The difficulty will just get tougher. So you want to make sure your Pokemon are raised up for this. And what about you? To be strong is to be weak. To be weak is to be... Sh okay then. So down here, this is the Battle Arcade. People expect so much from me, cooking, cleaning, and laundry. Not to mention being good at training Pokemon. Okay. Like a Pokemon trainer, we have been together for a long time. Eventually, we will be parted. Till then, I will try- Aw, that's sweet. That's sweet of those two. It makes me the most happy being a trainer. The fact that Pokemon will always be with me. Yeah, that's a- that's a- that's something that makes me smile. See, the most important person in the Battle Castle is a lady. Lady like a princess, I mean. Okay, then. But yeah, that's the Battle Castle down there. And the last facility here that we haven't seen is the Battle Hall. I'll be exploring all of these facilities on their own later on, but for now, that's the Battle Frontier. And with that, I'm gonna end it off here. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we're not gonna take on the Battle Frontier just yet. It's a tough place, so we're gonna need to make some preparations, which we will do in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And see you next time for some more Pokemon Platinum. Later!